Tim, how you doing? Good, Bob. Hey, I wanted to ask a couple things about, about Cam Little. Um, I know in fall camp you talked about how he was really hitting those long ones, and that seems like that's carried over to the season. Just what do you thought about the the kind of season he's had? And he seems like he's taking it even to a higher level than he he did last season. You know, he he really has. We was talking about it on the walk today about how a guy of his stature can kick the ball so far. You know, I guess little guy, smaller guys on tee box can hit it a country mile too. You know, but you know, he hit a Yesterday in in a two minute drill, he hit a sixty eight yarder. I mean, at the end to win the game, you know, and I'd never seen anything like it. But he he's done an absolutely great job, and uh, what a wonderful person. And uh, we're very fortunate. Accuracy is off the chart, and and uh, just having a great great year for us. Very valuable for us. We. You know, need to give him an opportunity. To, need to stay close enough in the fourth quarter to give him an opportunity to win a game for us, and I bet you he will. How great a weapon is that to have? Maybe when you cross midfield, you almost feel like like you're in his range. Maybe, maybe a few more yards to get. I find myself a lot of times, you know, talking on the headset to Dan, and you know, right when we get inside the forty, you know, or depending on where Cam says he can make it from, depending on which end he's kicking to. I always remind Dan, I say, hey, we, we got three here. We got three here. Obviously, we want seven or, you know, I'm talking about on third down where uh, third and long or something where you might want to run a draw or something like that where you because you know you have three points. So it's it's really, really comforting to know that he's on our team. Thanks. Go right. ahead. Yeah, Coach, uh, you talked a little bit about just the pressure with Alabama. They have 22 sacks this season. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment a little bit what you see on Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell. Uh, those guys have six and a half, four and a half sacks each, and just the pressure that they bring. And what you guys got to do to to stop that? Well, I think, you know, we have to win third down. You know, we're going to have to have a way to move the pocket. We're going to have to have a way to, to chip both sides. Um, we need we need some help. Uh, that's nothing negative against our guys up front. It's just a lot of guys need help against that those caliber of rushers. Um, we can't let them just change the football game uh, simply because those guys are on the field. We have to have answers for them, um, which we feel like we do. Uh, but they're defensively, Trey. They're they're so good and there's not a um a guy out there that you go man we can we can pick on this guy or he's not as good as alabama normally is and all that uh they're they're really really good really solid and and uh it starts with those defensive ends and i think they got three or four of them that are uh that caliber dallas he's been around for a long long time you know he's i remember him playing as a freshman against us so Really good player, got a lot of experience, long, very, very quick, very powerful. They're very, very powerful guys. They can run around you or bull over the top of you, which makes them uh, dangerous. On the other side of the ball, uh, Amari Niblack, uh, the tight end, they move him all over the place, line him in the slot, out wide. Right. What are the challenges with defending? I mean, he only has like nine catches, but it's like 170 yards. <laughs> I think when you look at them, the, the, the thing that would be surprising is, is that they're uh, a dominant 12 personnel team. Uh, they look like 10, they look like 11 personnel, but they like to play two tight ends. And uh, he's a big part of that and, and a very, very good player. Um, obviously uh, I think those numbers you just said are fairly high for, a, you know, not every tight end, but they're fairly high for a tight end position. Uh, obviously a big target for him, and and he can do everything. I think he's very, very valuable to their team. Uh, it's going to catch, you know, obviously can have some matchup problems for us. Uh, um, but uh, we we can't just do one or two things in a game. We have to be very aggressive. We have to be able to play drop eight. We have, uh, we have to first and foremost stop the run. But he 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 is valuable to them in all aspects of the game. Really good football player. Thanks, Coach. Evan. 
Yeah. Hey, coach. Over the weekend, uh, Ken and Sandy, one of the super fans of the Hogs, traveled the game and was mistreated by a lot of the fans from Ole Miss. What to you does it mean to have him as well as, you know, the whole bunch of Razorback fans who travel to support this team on the road? Right. It's Arkansas. You know, you, you don't ever want to go and take it for granted, you know, but we, we've ever since we've gone over to Ole Miss, ever since I've been a part of here and went to Ole Miss, we've had a whole lot of fans, you know, it's unfortunate uh, if uh, Cannon had gotten mistreated, it's very, very unfortunate. What a wonderful uh, man. Um, but, you know, the passion for the hogs and, and with that comes the positives and the negatives because passion means passion. It doesn't mean positive passion. And, uh, I certainly understand that it comes with the territory, but I would much rather have it that way than have nobody care about the program. And, and uh, we're very, very uh, appreciative of the fans. I think we'll see it when we finally uh, get back home after 30 some days away from home. I think we'll, we'll finally uh, get to feel the, pa the, the passion of the fans once again, but um, uh, we're very, very grateful, very, very thankful for them. Thanks coach. Uh, yeah, Sam, I know you hope Pooh Paul's able to go, but if he's not, just how comfortable do you feel with the other linebackers you've got to, to go out there aside uh, with Thomas? You know, I think the, the, the key there is if they get into tight 12, you know, they'll be in two tight ends. Um, if they get into tight 12s a lot, which they have YY formations, if they get in there a lot, then – you know, our capabilities of playing a, you know, it just takes another linebacker out because now you need to be in three linebacker set. Uh, so it takes a, you know, normally you're rotating two. If you get a whole lot of smash mouth, you're rotating three and, you know, we're not quite that deep. So uh, it certainly could help hurt us in that aspect. Um, but I'm very comfortable with, with uh, you know, the guys we have in the game. Um, obviously Pooh was a one for a reason. Um, but, um, uh, uh, I think what it's going to do is just going to make us look a little bit more at our substituting patterns, depending on what we see, whether it's tight 12, open 12, 11. And then also we saw this past week, y'all broke out y'all's version of the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, quarterback under center QB snake on third and one. I'm just curious, kind of, how that play came about, is that something y'all put in that week or is it something you've been waiting for the right opportunity? No, we, we put it in. Uh, well, we've had it in, but we put it in fast pace. You know, it was a hurry up type situation. And I about, uh, I got nervous because um, LSU did it against Missouri two or three times and didn't score from the, from this far, you know, earlier in, in that day and I'm like oh my lord but uh we had said we thought it would work and it did but we 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 put it in changed it a little bit in and we we wanted it to be in a hurry up mode a fast made surprise type deal to help us get the yard Jackson yeah uh Sam just curious about you know we saw snacks playing out wide and and hudson we've seen him kind of you know mix between hog and okay. safety he okay. had some confidence in your five guys like being versatile but i'm wondering if they've even exceeded your expectations from what you thought in the preseason with the secondary yeah really good question i you know i, I felt like um this last week we played the co most confident that we have now we, we still got to get guys on the ground and tackle a little bit better and think we've got work to do, but I, I, I felt like that group played really well. And I think some of that has to do with the versatility of guys like a Clark, like snacks, you know, obviously we, we, we got beat up last week physically. Uh, so we're not quite as um, uh, what you might call uh, non-confident in our guys uh, because we feel a lot of confidence in them because they've been able to play and show that they can have success. And, and uh, again, we learned that cross training a little bit during that COVID year and we continued to do that. And uh, that way it's kind of allowing us to get our best five. What we feel is the best five on the field at the same time. And I'm very confident that the kids will go out and play well. Uh, they're going to have to defeat the, you know, they're going to have to defend the long ball. And, um, no, we know that. 
specifically snacks, I mean, it's it's a lot of times it's hard for guys to bounce between the slot and the boundary. What skill set does he have that allows him to do that? I think, it, I think first of all, it starts in his mind. I, th- I think he thinks that he can play. He could play nose guard. You know, I think he thinks he, he he could. You know, and not a overconfident. I mean, just a confident guy. But he he possesses it. He he possesses enough size. If you can, if you could go out and, and recruit big corners, that's what you'd want because now you got a guy that's got the size, the ability to play corner but yet he can go play a hog he can play safety you know all those type things and a little bit that's what snacks is he's got enough size to play the hog but he's also got enough quickness to play the corner and uh, when we got him there was not any uh um thought in our mind uh for him to go to the hog position we got him as a corner and then we found out what type of tackler he was and the aggressiveness that he had and we were able to move him into hog. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, Sam, I wanted to ask you about Jeff Coat. No, he was kind of quiet <clears throat> the couple weeks before Ole Miss, and then he had three tackles for loss the other night. Just maybe how do you view his importance this weekend in terms of trying to get pressure on, on Milroe and being there for you in the run game? Yeah, I think I think obviously I think the first thing you have to do is you you've got to defend the run when you're talking about Alabama. They've got a pair of tackles weighed 360 pounds. I mean, they're little guys, you know, 310 pounds. Um, but Jeff Coat, uh, and a lot of times it goes in what is the offense do, trying to do against you? You know, do they look at you as a game changer? Are they chipping you? Are they double teaming you? Are they running plays to at you? Are they running plays away from you? Um, because if you look at our, his first game of the year, Western Carolina, it was, you know, there was no stats, uh, but we knew we had us a really good player. So uh, I think this, I think, um, you know, there was more opportunities came his way to make plays. Obviously we know every time they drop back to pass, you have an opportunity to sack the quarterback, but are they going to chip out on you? Do they run a tight end over the top? Of you? Do they slide towards you? And then you just have to be ready to make the play if they don't. And uh, I think uh, Ole Miss uh, had a lot of one-on-one battles with him and things of that nature, and he was he was able to win win some of those. I know we saw, um, and Jackson mentioned it earlier, but Snacks and Nudie at, at corner. If you get, in fastball yesterday, if you get Nudie back this week, Snacks on the other side. How do you just feel about those guys are matching up with with maybe some Alabama's top top perimeter guys. Yeah, I mean, we played some really good wide receivers, and we understand that. They, you know, we played LSU. They they've got some good ones, you know, and and so we played some good wide receivers. Uh, it's going to be about our technique, things of that nature. We obviously know Alabama has outstanding wideouts and a guy that can get it to them. Uh, but I feel good about it. You know, obviously, if we um, don't feel good about man-to-man coverage. We'll do some type of zone and, and try to, you know, we can drop eight. We can do some different things to try to help the guys. But I feel good about about our guys uh, uh, playing well. Uh, you know, uh, Braxton's wound up getting some starting time and uh, significant rat reps at corner. Um, can you talk about maybe what's allowed him to, uh, you know, make the rise that he's made. And I, I know you, you may or may not be without him this weekend, but just what he's done to to put himself into that mix. You know, I talked to him about it uh, yesterday, actually. And uh, it was about my experience when I played in college and his experience. I said, hey, is this what happened to you? Because basically I had seen exactly what you're asking me about what you've seen. And um, basically what happened is it just clicked for him. It, what he's supposed to do, how he's supposed to do it. It just all kind of finally clicked. It happened to me when I played uh, uh, football as well. Uh, so now you're seeing that true athletic ability that he has and the speed that he has. And I'm going to tell you now, when they wouldn't let him go back in the game, and I hope he doesn't mind me sharing, I mean, it, he was emotional now. I mean, it bothered him. And uh, he's a guy that loves to play the game and, finally earned his right to be that starter and and was playing extremely well and uh whether he's able to play or not I don't know but 
but his future for us is really bright. And to answer your question, I think he find, it finally clicked to him. He understood um, the calls, understood where he's supposed to be on the field and things, and just let his athletic ability take over at that point. Quit thinking as much. Otis. Coach, I know you entered the season with a lot of momentum and recruiting. You've lost four straight, but how's – I know you can't talk specific, but just how's the general feeling with the rec interactions with the recruits been on the phones and stuff? You know, I think, I think a lot of our recruits are coming uh, for reasons uh, to play for the Razorbacks, you know, play for the state of Arkansas. Uh, I think there's several different reasons. I think some of them are coming to play for their position coach and, you know, you know, all those type things. Uh, I feel really, really good about the guys that we have committed to us, real good. Um, but we also work very hard at keeping that relationship going, too. Uh, we know there's vultures out there, and they're saying that we're lost four in a row, and, and they're letting them know, too, like they don't already know. It's their school that they're committed to. Um, but it's a relationship game. It's a relationship game. Uh, business, if you will. And as long as we keep our relationships, I, I do not feel like we'll have much of a problem of of losing any of our commits. In the 24 class, I know you've got a lot of high school kids committed. Not, not The portal's coming up, but are there any more high school needs you have in the 24 class other than what you have now? You know, I think – you know, obviously, if we could find another linebacker out of high school, we we may take him. Old linemen are always guys that we would take. Uh, we're actively looking uh, in the 24 class because you just never stop recruiting, you know. But um, if we could sign 19 or 20 of the ones that we want, I think I'd be very satisfied and then trade out portal for portal. Yeah, T.J. Metcalf, is he, he's just continuing to come on for you, isn't he, Coach? Yeah. I mean, kind of like Braxton in a way. I mean, yes. Metcalf, just what's he meant to you? Your yeah, team? you know, his 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 only deal is his opportunities haven't come quite as 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 often as what uh, Braxton's have, but we, we have a lot of confidence in him, and uh, he is playing faster uh, as well. Uh, and I think he's going to be a, a really big part of our future. But I, I really like him a lot. I like his family. I like everything about him. But uh, his opportunities just haven't come as quite as often as Braxton's just because of who's playing in front of him but uh, and the injury situation and things of that nature. But uh, I think he's going to be a really good player, and he's doing a really good job for us now. Thanks, Coach. Daniel. Coach, you mentioned Braxton and things kind of finally clicking for him. For some of the younger guys who maybe, you know, have not been doing as well and have been units that have been struggling, is that something that's still work in progress for them that you can kind of gauge? Did you say, I'm sorry, I, I heard most of it, but it bl blotched out during, did you say something about a unit or? Yeah, Particularly like any of the younger guys who are still kind of a work in progress as far as understanding the schemes and things of that nature. Yeah. I'm, <clears throat> I'm saying I, every one of them, except for the guys that are getting um, a lot of playing time, you know, at this point in time uh, during the season, your young kids, uh, if they're not, playing a one or two they're on a the scout team you know so they're not doing a whole lot of they're doing individual they're doing game study but even half of that they're out walking through the look team uh so at some point if you don't get off the scout team uh, at some point you're getting better you're getting physically better you're getting technique better but towards the playbook and things of that nature, you're not. But to answer your question, it, the answer is yes and no. Yes, they are learning. It's starting to click as far as the technical part of it, the technique and things of that nature, and then obviously not getting a whole lot uh, of meeting time uh, on game plans and our specific offense and defense. Jackson, last one.
Muted. Sorry, I just wanted to piggyback off that real quick. Uh, does Ty Washington, like what he did against Ole Miss, does that kind of motivate you guys to maybe find out what some of the other guys a little further down on the depth chart that haven't played much uh, see what they can do? Or is it clearly mm -hmm. just he was so explosive in practice it was a kind of a rare or something different there? Well, I think part of Ty's deal is he was, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between him and the guys ahead of him, you know, not a whole lot of difference. Uh, I think um, to answer your question, I think if there's not a um, huge amount of difference, I think you really look at the younger kid, the non-experienced guy, you look at him and you try to get him in the game and hopefully they'll take off like TJ has, like Braxton has, you know, we're getting Gaffard more reps, things of that nature. Um, but if there's a big separation in there, probably not. But if they're close, and and even though Ty was down the depth chart, there wasn't a huge separation between him and the others. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.